So guys, what's going on? I hope you guys are well. So guys, I'm going to try getting another live stream um, out today. Uh, um, let's talk a bit about Herring Frampton in the live stream. Um, I'm going to try getting it out. I'm, I can't promise, but I will try getting another live stream. So uh, hopefully I'll uh, set a scheduled time so then you guys know exactly when I want it, when I want to do that live stream. But I want to talk about something Bernard Hopkins had to say. Uh, he feels the biggest threat to Canelo Alvarez is Jamal Charlo. Uh, he feels that Charlo would be a 50-50 kind of fight and Jamal Charlo is the only one that he feels is a threat to Saul Canelo Alvarez at 160 or 168. He's the only threat and he's the only guy that he would view it as 50-50 and he feels Charlo could win that fight against Canelo Alvarez. And he feels that Canelo right now is having warm-up fights. Literally very disrespectful to Saunders and Smith. Uh, he's basically saying that he feels these fights are warm-up fights for Canelo Alvarez. Pre-season, he called it in an interview with Fight Hub TV. I want, to, I want you guys to let me know what you think about that. What Bernard Hopkins had to say about Canelo right now in pre-season. Uh, beating guys like Callum Smith and Billy Joe Saunders. Abney Yildrim, we all know what, what that was. Mandatory, we get that, all right. He had, a, he had a little gimme fight. But in terms of Smith and Saunders, they're both world champions, very good fighters. And Bernard Hopkins is basically saying that he feels that these are warm-up fights for Canelo and that Charlo is the main course. Charlo is the main fight. Charlo is the only guy that can give Canelo Alvarez trouble or beat him. Now, I'm not going to disagree with Bernard Hopkins because Charlo might be the truth. Like, I've said it on here that Charlo might be great. Charlo seems great. He's physically very strong. He's tough. He's rugged. Uh, he's got, you know, he's got a great jab. He's strong. Uh, he can punch. Um, he definitely is a good fighter. There's no doubt about it. He's, he can fight. He's physically very strong. But I question his resume. I question... The, the guys that he's been in the ring with, oh, he's only, like, I think his top win is against Dervy and Chenko. You know, and at, at that top level, at 160 and 168, because Charlo's going to have to go to Canelo at 168, he hasn't really got any stellar wins apart from Dervy and Chenko. Let's be honest, at 160 or 168, he's never fought at 168. But he's not really got any stellar wins, Charlo. So, Canelo, on the other hand, just walked through a champion in Smith, and now he's fighting another champion, then he's going to fight another champion, right, so the guys, the guy, and, and let's be honest, he fought Golovkin twice, right, he, he's fought Jacobs as well, another guy that Charlo was accused of ducking Jacobs, I don't know, I don't think he, personally, I don't know the situation behind Jacobs and Charlo, Jacobs uh, confronted Charlo, but nothing came to fruition, oh, like Jacobs said, oh, you ain't touched an M yet, or they were just going back and forth like that. But I want to see Jacob. Maybe, listen, maybe Charlo could fight at Jacobs. Maybe that would be a good fight. Jacobs looked like he's on the slide. Maybe that would be a good fight. I'd like to see Charlo. I'd like to see Charlo fight, you know, somebody at that top echelon, uh, which I just don't think he's been in the ring with yet at 160 or 168, which is very disappointing because I think Charlo's very good. Now, in terms of whether Charlo's got the style like Bernard Hopkins was saying to win, like Bernard Hopkins is a legend and a guy that knows a lot about boxing. So he obviously knows what he's talking about. But I do agree with Bernard Hopkins that I think it's that type of style that Charlo has that has any chance. And I don't think Charlo beats Canelo, by the way. Let me just get that out there. But I think if there's anyone that's going to beat Canelo, I don't think it's the Saunders. I know a lot of people say that's the slick southpaw movement and all of that causes Canelo. I think Canelo's, I think Canelo's got better at that. I think Canelo now has mastered how to beat guys that move around and, and got quick feet. And I think he's mastered that. I think he's mastered how to beat those type of guys now. And I think, I think Canelo is going to be a problem for those type of fighters like a Saunders. That's why I think he's going to beat Saunders. Because I think Canelo has mastered how to... He's fought those guys so many times that I feel like he's mastered or found a way on how to beat them. Um, you know, I, I feel like... Personally, I feel like, you know, he's going to break Saunders down. I think he's going to break him down. He's going to go to the body. Uh, he's going to slow him down. And then he's going to look to take him out late. I think Charlo's a different fight. Because Charlo, 
of course, Char I don't believe Charlo's as good as Golovkin, but Charlo has that kind... See, the guy that gave Canelo a lot of trouble in recent time is Golovkin, twice. A lot of people thought he lost twice. I don't think I thought he lost the first one. I thought he won the second one. But that's the kind of style that will give Canelo trouble. A guy that can physically impose himself, a guy that's big and strong, that can punch, that can come forward, put Canelo, make Canelo uncomfortable, tire him. Because Canelo, one thing I've seen about Canelo, Canelo likes to work in spurts. He likes to have his rest in between. But when he's fighting someone like Billy Joe Saunders, Canelo's never under pressure. Canelo's never been put under pressure because he knows the other guy can't hurt him. So he can take his breathers, right? He knows that the, the, the firepower coming from the other side isn't going to affect him much. Someone like Golovkin physically imposes himself. He's very strong. He punches very hard, right? And Canelo knows he has to be on his game 24-7. So it's not just the physical pressure of Golovkin, it's the mental pressure. Uh, the fact that Canelo has to be switched on mentally. And the fact that Golovkin is on top of him mentally. All these things drain you. And if there's somebody that's at 160 or 168 that can possibly do that is Charlo. But I don't, I don't think Charlo... See, the, the difference between Charlo and Golovkin, here's the difference. Uh, Golovkin is a very, very good boxer. Golovkin is a, is a very, very good boxer. His amateur pedigree would show that. And even as a boxer, for me, the way he cuts off the ring, you know, he's a, he's a good boxer. Whereas I, I, I'm not sure about Charlo. I'm not sure whether Charlo's as accomplished a boxer as Golovkin. Um, so I, I don't know whether Charlo, I think, I don't know whether Canelo will start picking him apart. I don't know whether Canelo will start picking him apart. So these are the question marks. But if Charlo goes in there with somebody top level at 160, 168, we'll, we'll, they, those questions will be answered. This is why I'm saying if Charlo was to go in there and fight a Benavidez or fight an Andrade and absolutely put a beating on those guys, then I think Charlo would put himself in a great position and actually people will start believing that this fight's a 50-50 fight. Right now, Bernard Hopkins is giving that opinion, but many would disagree. Many would say no chance. Canelo... Um, Charlo doesn't stand a chance against Canelo. So for me, personally, I feel that Charlo needs to fight one of those big names to prove to the fans that actually this guy is legit. And Dervianchenko fight was good. It was a step in the right direction. But now we need him to step up even more. Maybe fight an Andre. See, the Andre fight is a great fight. I don't know why they, they don't look at that fight and make that fight. And I think Andre's style could be a problem for Charlo because Korobov gave Charlo a lot of trouble. So that style, if... if, if if Charlo can, can beat Andre, knock him out or look impressive against him, because I personally think that that style that um, Andre has got is going to be a problem because Korobov gave Charlo a lot of problems. A lot of people thought Korobov beat Charlo. That was a very close fight. So for me personally, I think the Charlo and uh, Andre fight is a great fight and a fight that they should make. In terms of... In terms of Canelo Alvarez, I think if the winner of that fight will put himself in a great position to fight, get the Canelo fight once Canelo becomes undisputed at 168. They could easily move up and get that fight. I think they will put themselves in line to get that fight. But right now, a lot, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of call from the fans, especially the fans in America, for, to see Charlo v. Canelo. Uh, a lot of people think Charlo is a problem for Canelo Alvarez. Um, I, I don't... I think, Charlo, I think Charlo has the ability and he's physically strong and he's got the attributes that could cause Canelo some trouble because Charlo is a big dude and he's strong. Uh, but again, I just don't think he's, an, I don't think he's got the, the complete package. I don't know whether he's an accomplished boxer, so to speak, to deal with someone like Canelo. Because if Charlo, with the physical strength, with the attributes, is also a very good boxer and has a great boxing IQ, then that makes the Canelo fight very interesting. But if Charlo is just a rough, tugged, rough, uh, rough, tough guy uh, that's physically strong, Canelo will deal with that. Canelo will deal with that. So again, like I said, we need to see Charlo step up against Brenavidez, against Andre, to see how good uh, Jamal Charlo is, is really. Because Jamal Charlo might be the best of the bunch at 160 and 168 in terms of leaving, not talking about Canelo, but about the rest. Now, a lot of people think Jamal Charlo beats Golovkin. But I would like to see that fight. Yeah, sorry, I forgot, completely forgot to mention that. That's a great fight. I wouldn't mind seeing Jamal Charlo against Golovkin. I think that would be a great fight. I think that would be a great matchup. 
I think that would be a fight that many people would be interested in and a fight that people would want to see. Charlo v. Golovkin. And, if, and the winner of that fight, again, the winner of that fight, actually, I'd probably like to see that fight more than the Andre fight. The winner of that fight could put themselves in a great position to get the Canelo fight. So for me, Jamal Charlo should target Golovkin. A lot of people keep saying, well, oh, Golovkin don't want to. I, I don't personally think Golovkin wants to fight Charlo. I made a video about it because I think Char uh, Golovkin will be looking at Charlo as a risk. And he's, for me, he's waiting out for the Canelo uh, trilogy. But if Jamal Charlo can force that and they can, they can pay Golovkin enough money to take that risk, I think that would put the winner of that fight in a great position for the Canelo fight, personally. I think that, that is a fight to make, probably, Char Charlo v. Golovkin. But I don't know, you see, I, I don't really like to count somebody out. See, because with Charlo, like I said, he has that physical style. He has that style that could potentially cause... Um, Canelo trouble because for me the style that's going to cause Canelo trouble is the physically imposing style like a Baterbiev, like a Charlo, like a Golovkin. For me, these are the guys that are going to cause Canelo trouble. I don't think a guy that's going to box and move and use his feet is going to cause Canelo any trouble. But Canelo right now, the reason why I think Canelo beats all of these guys is because Canelo's so versatile and he's improving. I feel like Canelo's getting better and better, even though he's getting to the point now where you start to see boxers slide. Because of the guy that the guy is so dedicated and lives the life and lives in the gym, I, I just don't see anyone beating him. Because for me right now, he's the most complete fighter at 160, 168 and 175. I don't think there's a more complete fighter than, than Canelo Alvarez right now in world boxing. I think he's a complete fighter. He's got a great chin. He's got a great engine, which used to be a question mark before. Um, he's got a great jab. He's got a great punch variety. He's, got gr he's just got great skills. He's got great skills. And I, and I think he's a problem for every, anyone and everyone in the world in, in the, in one, from 160 to 175. That's why I even think he can beat Baterbiev. A lot of people think, don't agree with me. They think Baterbiev will KO uh, Canelo. They'll, just, they'll, they'll walk him down and hurt him. Now, Charlo, right, is, in my opinion, that type of fighter. He's physically imposing. He's physically very strong. Problem is, for me, Canelo's a complete boxer. He's a complete fighter. And I don't know whether Charlo... I don't, I don't know how good Charlo is because I haven't seen him tested against those top guys. He may be the real deal. He may be the best out of the bunch of leaving Canelo out. He might even beat the brakes of Golovkin right now. Who knows? But we need to see it. We need to see it. So right now, I don't know how good Charlo is. So going off what I've seen so far, for me, Canelo beats him comfortably. But I don't know because I haven't seen him against those other top guys. Bernard Hopkins is obviously, he obviously knows a little bit more probably about Charlo. Maybe he just rates him very highly. But I just don't know how you can look at those two fighters right now with Canelo's experience and what Canelo's done in the game uh, and call that a 50-50. I, ju I, I just don't see it because... I just think Canelo's got so much more experience. For me, Canelo's the more versatile boxer. He's got more experience at that high level. I, I don't see how Bernard Hopkins sees that as a 50-50. But, you know, you've got to respect him. He's a legend. He knows a lot more about the sport than, than I do, to be honest. And he probably sees something in Charlo that he feels that could give Canelo trouble. I do as well. But I just don't think whether he's versatile enough to use those attributes that he's got in order to beat Canelo. I think he's got the attributes, but I don't know whether he's I don't know whether he'll be able to use those attributes to to beat Canelo. That's the thing. I don't know whether he's the complete package, whether he has the versatile style uh to box and make it difficult because you're going to have to be, be able to box with Canelo. Otherwise Canelo's going to start picking you apart. I I just feel that, you know, if you if you are rough and tough and strong, yeah, you might be able to cause him a bit of trouble, but I feel like eventually Canelo's superior boxing IQ will come to the fore and he'll start, for me, start picking you apart. But if, if Charlo is also a very good boxer, he's got a good jab, uh, but we need to see him in there with someone like a Golovkin, someone like an Andre, just to, just to convince the fans, you know what, whoa, this guy's the real deal, because right now his resume is not the greatest. You know, and we need to see these guys. Maybe Charlo fight Golovkin. He needs to. I, I, listen, I, I personally think Charlo would fight Golovkin because he's got everything to gain, and Golovkin's on the slide. Uh, and the winner of that fight will put themselves in prime position for the Canelo fight, uh, without question. But what do you guys think? Do you think that Charlo is the biggest threat to Canelo Alvarez? Would you really think that? Do you really think that Canelo Alvarez 
is only threat at 160 and 168 is Charlo. Because a lot of people want to see it. Not just, I know people say the LDBC um, in America, they, they, they want, a lot of people want to see it. Not just those guys. A lot of people want to see that fight now. A lot of people, there's a lot of clamor now for that fight. You know, Charlo, there's people starting to talk about Charlo. You know, I remember, I remember on um, Max Kellerman and uh, Stephen A. Smith started, uh, you know, on, on first take started talking about uh, Charlo that he, you know, he, he potentially should, we should start looking at them as a pound for pound fighters. I think with the younger one, uh, Jamel, I think he's got, he's a three belt holder in the light middleweight division. So definitely he should be in the top 10. Uh, he should be considered in the top 10 pound for pound, especially if he beats Brian Castano for the, for the light middleweight, uh, you know, light middleweight title uh, or light middleweight, WBO, I think that he's got um, Brian Castano. I'll have to check that. And if he can, if he can become undisputed, then he's definitely a top ten pound for pounder. But in terms of, in terms of Jamal, I think he's, I think he's got to, I think he's got to fight some of those top guys at one sixty. If he can beat a Golovkin, then he puts himself in in uh, recognition for that as well. Uh, I, I, and I, and not just that, he puts himself in recognition for Canelo fight. You know, he puts himself in prime position. Uh, I, I do think that uh, hopefully Canelo will eventually fight Charlo. But for me, like I said, if Canelo can trump all of that and go and fight Baterbiev, which would be a way bigger fight, which would be way, way more dangerous and which would mean a lot more to Canelo's legacy than a Charlo. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you would agree with me that Baterbiev is a lot more dangerous. Baterbiev is also a better... Right now, Baterbiev has got a better win. Baterbiev destroyed Govzik for the unified light heavyweight championship of the world. You know, so Baterbiev is doing doing a lot right now and Baterbiya is doing it in less in less fights as well you know so for me uh Charlo J Jamal Ch Jamal Charlo has got to prove prove himself against one of those guys at 160 you know Golovkin Andre these are the two fights you know maybe even look for the Morata fight you know just to you get become unified but I, I I think I think Charlo definitely is he's got the attributes to trouble Canelo I just don't know whether he has the uh, I don't think he, whether he has the boxing IQ, whether he has the experience to, to beat Canelo, because Canelo's a very versatile fighter right now, and he, he, looks he looks invincible, he looks unbeatable right now. But yeah, I would like to see Charlo and, uh, I would like to see Charlo and Canelo one day, but as of right now, um, let Canelo become undisputed, and then if Canelo wants to trump everyone, trump everything and go and fight Baterbiev, Salute to him because to me that would trump everything. To me, a Charlo fight is nowhere near, uh, from a legacy standpoint, as big as that one. Nowhere near. And I don't want to hear any fans. Baterbiev is the real deal, a light heavyweight. You know, and let's be honest, Charlo doesn't beat Arthur Baterbiev. So, you know, Baterbiev would be a much more dangerous fight and a much more legacy defining fight for Canelo. But Charlo would be a good fight as well. I wouldn't mind Charlo. Because Charlo's making some noise, but again, I'd still like to see Charlo up his resume a little and fight an Android or a Golovkin. What do you guys think? Leave your thoughts. Do you think, do you agree with Bernard Hopkins that Charlo is the only one that can beat Canelo? Or do you think there's someone else? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below, guys. And guys, remember to please like, share, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.